Hello, it is Shania Richardson with She Rich Educational Consulting, and I am back with blog number. And I promise that we would talk about why you should never, never, ever, 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 ever tell a student to stop talking. Be quiet. Listen to me. Well, <laughs> we've all said that. We we all have as teachers because we want them to be quiet. We want them to stop talking. We want them to listen to us. So, if you're not supposed to say that, what are you supposed to say? Try this. When I say, hey, you say, hi, hey, hey. See how fun that was? <laughs> now I have your attention, don't I? Because if I continue with some variations of be quiet, stop talking, listen to me, one of three or all of these scenarios will transpire. A, students will not be quiet, but they will get louder. B, students will not be quiet and tell you to be quiet. <laughs> C, Students will not be quiet, but take their disobedience to another level. We don't say be quiet because it does not work, okay? And it alludes to a lack of teacher authority in the classroom. I had to learn the hard way, so I'm sharing. I'm sharing. Karen, you're sharing. The correct way... To garner attention is called, what I did was a call and response. So when I say, hey, you say hi, hey, hey, call and response. When I say, ice in the glass, you say, Kool-Aid, ice in the glass, ice in the glass. So why not bring this level of engagement to your classroom? It's cool. It's fun. And everybody wants to be a part of the action and the excitement that goes along with the call and response. It's why no matter how talented your entertainers, whoever it is that you follow or watch, they always have this hype person that, you know, gives the little prelude to the artist that's getting ready to perform and come out. So, you can do that in your classroom as well. Uh, you can pick a responsible student to, to do the call and response if you want to. Um, so you, you can use popular songs, chants, nursery rhymes, raps, anything catchy, commercials, anything attention getting. Then you can proceed with your directions. For example, my ninth graders, I've dealt with ninth graders and eighth graders some and some seventh graders, but mostly ninth graders. I would say, listen up, stop talking, be quiet. It it did not work. They, and if most of the students stopped talking and one person was still talking, it still derailed everything because the person that was sitting beside the person who was steadily talking, they couldn't hear, and then I had to repeat myself over and over and over again, and it just took down the energy and the anticipation of learning for that day. But when I use classroom, in, uh, when I, excuse me, when I use call and response in my classroom, it ran much more smoothly. So, when I said, make it rain, my students will say, clear it out. And clear it out basically means pay attention to the instruction, to stop talking, to listen up. Whatever it is you're doing, track me, the teacher. I would repeat the phrase until everyone said, clear it out. Taking time to make sure that everyone was listening ensured that my instructions would be heard and that I would not have to keep repeating myself. It was better to repeat, make it rain, make it rain, 
make it rain than to go through my whole set of directions again. And the compliance was not forced. It minimized the power struggle and created a natural flow to the learning. You want to finesse the learning and be a cool teacher. So as I mentioned in block one, if you do have that student, you know that one student, that the one, you know, that one, that one student that's not in compliance, check in. Hey, you all right? Can I help you? What, what can I do to get you started? And how can I help you? Sometimes students just need a reset time. And a reset can simply be walking away after giving directions, um, allow the student to self-correct. If the student is unruly, you sim you know what to do from blog one. You write them a pass. You say, hey, you have five minutes. When you come back in this classroom, I expect for you to be on task and do as you are expected to do. I expect nothing less. And that's my speech. <laughs> so I encourage you to try it because it's it's been 99.9% .9 effective for me. Um, so as an educator, we must adopt the mindset that no child chooses to be a failure. They merely lack the tools to become a success. Just saying. Just keep that up here in everything you do. And if you do, it will be evident in your lessons, in the way you execute the lessons, and in your relationships with your students. Because what you're doing is from the heart. Okay? So now that you have the group's attention, it's time to give directions. And I did not know this at first, but there is a right way and a wrong way to give directions, believe it or not. So, we're going to get to that, but I have this like quick story I want to insert right quick. So, when I first did the call and response, I didn't really think it was going to work. And when I, um, when I did it, and I said, make it rain, and then the student said, clear it out. And I had their attention, and everybody was quiet. I forgot what my directions were. I was like, oh, I can't believe this worked. Until I, I was I was frozen in time. I was like, I can't believe this. Is this, <laughs> is this true? Is this really real? Am I being punk? But anyway, direction given. Direction given. Directions should be given one at a time. Do not compile directions on ninth graders, eighth graders, seventh graders, kindergartners, twelfth graders, adults. Don't don't do that. Keep it simple. Keep a simple process. We want it to flow. What I found was most helpful was to organize a classroom task into three sections and set a time limit for each task. I would not recommend giving more than three tasks in one classroom setting because it's easier to keep yourself and students accountable for the instructional time. Also, an outline on the board with the directions and the time limits was beneficial for students that completed certain tasks before the deadline. I would simply encourage uh, the early finishers to move on to the next phase of instruction. And of course, not every student would finish a task before the deadline. That's why the third phase of instruction should be an enrichment activity or project-based learning activity. While certain students are uh, performing the enrichment activities, the other students that need extra time to complete the core assignment, which should be phase two, 
they have time to do that and everybody is still learning and everybody is still engaged in your instruction is differentiated <laughs> also the classroom projects give students a goal to reach an educational reward brought to you by intrinsic motivation that's what we want we want to be motivated from within and the results to come out when my students saw other students uh, cutting, gluing, researching things on the internet, writing a script for a skit that they were going to perform in class. They were motivated each day to complete their work so they could get to the project-based learning. And there it is, the, the pacing and um, of the lesson. Call and response not only works for listen to me moments, it is also beneficial for dismissal. So when I said seven, eight, my students say lay them straight. And they added this themselves, the little uh, beating on the desk part. I'll say seven, eight, and they'll say lay them straight. It was cute. I allowed it. Or they would stomp their feet. Lay them straight. So... But I, I got their attention. Um, and lay them straight basically mean turn in your seat work, clean up your workspace, log off the computers, basically wrap up, return to your seat, get ready for dismissal. So, in sum, we should never tell our students to be quiet. Stop talking. Listen to me. Why? They're not going to do it. They, they're not going to listen to you. Most of them may, but typically, my experience, they're not, they're not going to do it. But what does work is when I say, hey, you say hi, hey, hey. See what I mean? I would like to hear your comments and questions. So hit me up and make sure you check out next Sunday's blog, blog three, for how to get the group to do group work. Because you know how like one or two people like take over and you don't get participation from everybody and some kids just lay back and let everybody else do stuff and so you feel some kind of way when you assign a grade like you really didn't deserve this but okay we i'm gonna tell you how to keep accountability don't forget to like and subscribe for the latest thank you for watching and i look forward to chatting with you again